the biggest thing that has always made our events successful is always like free food. Hi, I'm Joe Mazzara. I'm the president of Shocker Gaming. I'm Desiree Henshaw and I'm the secretary of the club. So if you're interested in starting a club, uh, the way it works at Wichita State is we need to have like a minimum of five people. Uh, so we're required by our constitutions to have four executive board members. President, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. We actually have a fifth one, which is our community officer. Uh, but there's usually two different departments depending on what kind of club you're starting. That's the best way to do it. President of Shocker Gaming. Uh, it's, it's a lot of day-to-day -day stuff, I guess. It's, it's not really just one big thing ever unless it's preparing for an event. It's a lot of just kind of maintenance all the time. Making sure players are okay and you know making it to their practices and stuff like that. Make sure every team is functional. So as a secretary, um, I kind of like take notes at meetings and stuff and log times and I keep track of attendance because um, it's important for attendance because that means you're eligible to, like, to vote for new positions or run for positions and stuff. And I help the president like get stuff like together for the meetings on like what to talk about and I write the logs. Right now I'm kind of overseeing like events and social media. So our Twitter, our Instagram, our Facebook, so each social media has their own person running our account. Uh, and then our community officer and our treasurer help with anything that's going on in the club. If we need to purchase something and he manages stuff like getting new players into the club, running board game night, kind of like all the community stuff. So that way we have five members so that when we do like quorum votes it's more even, it's not like split. Keep the chatter up, I guess in Discord, keeping people interested, keeping casual players, connecting with other players. To become like officially part of a club, you usually have to drop a constitution or adopt something from another club that already exists. We have our own constitution for like the executives and like what we need to do for like how to run the club that we follow by like school rules. And then we made a very like simple version, like we called it the player agreement. So any like competitive players that want to be on a team, they have to follow a set of rules. We kind of we kind of made it simple to understand and like we kind of condensed it so we made it easier for them to like look over and basically don't bully each other, don't give out like personal info. And then we just let them know like if you break these rules, uh, these are your violations that we follow. And so there's a set that they that they can see and you know like they're just not like terminated if they did something wrong. They can be like, hey, I'm supposed to just get suspended. So that kind of like protects them and protects us in a way and every player has to sign it and it's good for like a year and then we'll go over it with them next year and see if they want to play competitively but it's just to keep everyone safe so nobody gets in trouble. Because we had so many people come in and that was one of our big challenges, uh, what we did this semester for league specifically is we tried to find a spot for everybody. We try to make it simple by just telling people like what roles do you play, um, like your main and your secondary role, and then we just kind of organize it by rank. Uh, the varsity program is more geared towards like really, really high level play. Like all of the players in the program are really high ranked, they're really good at the game that they play. It's very competition focused. They play in some of the more premier leagues that are limited to varsity programs versus the club where our highest level team might play in like the highest tier or second tier of uh, this Collegiate Star League competitions. So we ended up having five league teams at one point. I think it's trimmed down to about four now. Honestly, most of our other teams are healthy, but we need people. So if they come on and they're like, hey, I'm interested in this, I'd move, I send them to the captain of whatever team that is, make sure they're communicating with the coordinator of that game. And most of the time they get a slot on the team. And we're always looking to expand. So most people that come in can find a place. Um, we do have tiered teams, like we have a team that is the best, the highest ranked people for most games, Overwatch and League specifically. Overwatch was fairly easy because we didn't have, we had like two teams, we had like a strict like varsity and then like the JV side. Um, we just kind of break it up into ranks and then if we need to we'll like fluctuate and like move people up or like fall off. Uh, we expect to go from like 40 to 60, we went from 40 to like 120, so trying to Manage the influx of people that are really interested in esports and want to play on teams. Uh, making sure that is seamless and making sure all the teams stay functional with all these people. And holding events that are interesting to a large group of people is also a challenge. So we encourage players that they find like any tournaments local or like even like out of state just to let us know and we'll like pay for their entry. We'll like look for like hotel accommodations and 
the school like help us take care of it with our budget and everything. Primarily for capital, what we do is we make a presentation to the sports club executive board, which I'm a member of, and every sports club has to do this. They set, put together a presentation, they talk about why they need money, where it's going, where their influx is coming from. It's really like a budget request is what we call it. Uh, so that's how we get like most of our funding, like actual monetary funding. Uh, for resources and stuff like that, it's a lot of cross communication, like with the campus, like we talked to WSU Ventures. That's how we like reserve rooms for our meetings and, and things like that. We talk to the engineering department if we ever need the computers from the EEB. We talk to Campus Rec if we want to do events or about tabling here and registering for that. Uh, we talk to event services at the RSC when we do our Smash weeklies. So honestly, it's just talking to who we need to talk to and making sure all of our ducks in a row whenever we are wanting to do something and making sure that we have open lines of communication with everybody across campus. Any sponsorship that we look for is usually with a local business and we try to make sure that it's like a mutual thing, that they're getting something out of being our sponsor. Um, so right now our primary form of organization is in Discord. Uh, we organize that by team, we give them all their own chats, we have general chats for everybody who's not on a team and just interested in stuff. We have chats for specific events and things that we run, like Tabletop Night. Uh, our Discord's kind of closed, so you have to kind of know somebody to get in, which is good for us, because when we recruit, it allows us to be like, hey, you're in it now, you'll see all the announcements there. Um, we've kind of had some issues with people who are console players. They don't use Discord, really, so I've just told them Facebook is a really good way to get a hold of us, because there's at least three of us that are always checking it, and notifications are always on. Uh, we also, as a board, use Trello to organize some of our thoughts and tasks. Um, we haven't been using it that much, it's something that's kind of new. Uh, we also use like Google Docs to manage like all of our forms that we have people fill out, um, surveys, important documents, uh, photographs that we get from events, and branding for our sponsors too. We do have an email that's also easy to get a hold of us, and then Joe hands out his business card which has his personal email and his cell phone number, so that's another way to get a hold of him. Other than that, like, Discord is the biggest means of communication, so we try to encourage members to get a Discord if you don't have one. Uh, we post a lot of physical things too, so we have a lot of flyers around campus. Uh, we do a lot of recruiting and tabling. We set up tables, big poster boards, put our branding all over the place, and just kind of welcome people into the club mostly. There's not a very high barrier for entry at all. Uh, we, most people come right into the club once they find out it exists. Uh, nope. Is it? Since we are very esports focused, but we are a gaming club and we cater to all of the gamers on campus, a lot of our events are tailored towards that general player base. If it gets too competitive, it kind of like draws, there's like that divide, so casual gamers will just end up like hanging out in the corner, like watching people play games, which isn't really any fun. There's not that much going on for the general player base because the other teams are practicing or playing matches. So it's really important to me at least that they have something to do within the club and they can feel like they're a member and hanging out with other people. Um, so to plan events, we talk amongst like the board first and we try to like keep monthly events because we know like students are always busy. We have things going weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. Our lock-ins, we try and do two larger events during the semester every time. A test with sponsors and we get cool stuff to give away. Um, we try to hit like holidays and stuff. Um, our weekly event is tabletop night where people bring board games, consoles, whatever. We hook them up. They can start playing those things together with other people in the club. And our, year, our yearly events kind of differ. It depends on what's going on. Uh, last semester, we did a big Halloween event with the Animation Coalition and the Game Design Club at Shocker Studios. We had a bunch of pizza, we had a bunch of consoles, we had a huge giveaway, we had a costume contest. It was super great. But uh, the biggest thing that has always made our events successful is always like free food. Everyone will show up and that's how you get them and then We'll take advantage of it, like asking him questions like, oh, what do you guys want to do like next month? Like, how do you feel about this event? If we did this, is there any like volunteers to help? We'll do it at like somebody's house at like two in the morning, like we did at Joe's, or we'll have it at like Shocker or 
the John Bardo Center now. So like you take advantage of like any of the free stuff you get and it helps your events too. So I, I got involved in the club, uh, just met some members at the Midwest Esports event. Uh, I just started talking to people. I was really into League of Legends at the time. Uh, so I was just asking around and started going to meetings and events and stuff like that. And uh, I was just really interested in like furthering the reach of the club at the university. Uh, once I was on the team, I was the captain. And I just really wanted to be more involved. So I ran for vice president and then I became the president in February. So I've been gaming since I've, for as long as I can remember, I've loved video games. So one day, Joe and I were walking through the RC and the Shocker Gaming Club, which was actually called Wichita Esports. It was like, had a booth set up in the student center and they kind of like drew us in because they were playing Smash and stuff. And they kind of told us about League of Legends. And so I ended up getting involved by like joining a JV team. And Joe and I actually did that together. And it was a lot of fun. Um, we were just kind of like a fun team, just like messing around and stuff. We won a lot though, so I made a lot of friends and then that was when I kind of realized that I wanted to be more involved. So I tried out for a position for like an exec in training and then I went through like the process of um, going through like the different roles and what I would like to do and I decided to do secretary because that role opened up and they needed somebody so I felt like I was best fit for it. And I ran for the position and then I ended up getting it and so now here I am. It's just, it's really my passion, like, I was super interested in esports and then I was super interested in helping that grow on campus, so I guess the thing that's more most rewarding for me is recruiting, kind of, because uh, the more people we get, the more that we can show, like, hey, this is legit, like, a lot of people are interested in it, and our recruitment has been really successful, and the administration has obviously seen that with the building of the esports hub, like, that. that's the reward for me is making sure that people know, hey, this is happening, this is legit, and we're lucky enough to have administration who has seen that and taken action on it. So it's more benefit for the general community that we have a huge computer lab that people can play games on in their spare time. Um, so that's really it for me. I like seeing our teams compete, and that's, that's great as a competitive outlet for them. It's great for me too, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but I just like seeing everybody that wants to be a part of it, be a part of it. I made a lot of friends throughout the years and I think the most rewarding thing is going to be like my lifetime connections with everyone and like just the leadership and networking skills that I have and the opportunities that I get and so it's going to really help me out because I'm a game design major so just having that background with like also running a gaming club is going to look great on the resume so that's what is most rewarding for me. If you're planning on starting a club for esports you have to be prepared for a lot of sudden growth and a lot of just a huge amount of people being interested in what you like and being prepared with your team of executives to handle that. You have to find that happy medium with people and it's really hard to do with such like a large group. It's a huge club. It's only getting bigger. <laughs>